Welcome to Gritability, a podcast about the power of perseverance, overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds to attain the life of your dreams. I'm your podcast host, Adam Clausen, and with me is the beautiful and radiant Ro Clausen. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. But before we get started. Did you just steal my thought? Maybe, maybe I did. <laughs> get started. Go ahead. Tell me. Uh, I was going to say, before we get started, I know you wanted to give a brief disclaimer. Yes, but I also wanted to take a left real quick. Take a left. Okay. So everybody always asks us how we keep our relationship so easy. We don't really argue. And in real time this morning, one of us was having a meltdown. So I was trying to listen to a work meeting, take care of a toddler, get breakfast and coffee going and get ready for this podcast this morning. Couldn't find a pair of shoes. It was just like the stupidest stuff that compiled, compiled, compounded. And you took it like a champ. Like you just would not, I guess, feed into my horrific mood. So first of all, thank you. And second of all, I think that that's a tip for people in a relationship when they always ask us like, how do you guys do it? I think we're very good at when one of us is kind of melting or on fire or whatever phrase you want to use. The other one is very good at just calming the other one down. So. Great point. And I would say that goes to, you know, just our experience with coaching. Both of us are certified coaches. And at times we have to kind of step outside of ourselves to really be there in support of the other one. I would say that's where most people struggle, right? Um, because it's easy to just become very self-absorbed where last week on our way in, I was going through it. I was definitely feeling a little frazzled, a little frustrated, and you were able to step outside of yourself and really coach me through it. And that's what was on my mind this morning. I'm like, well, now I get the opportunity to be there for you and support you. And, and I'm grateful to be able to do that, to have the knowledge, the skills, and, and to have built the the relationship with the communication that we have. I agree, because my default is always like, you're gonna be in a bad mood, let me show you. You know, it's, it's to get on the defense and you have to step out of your shoes and just take a breath and try to help the other person through it. Okay, so let me go to my disclaimer, because I know this is, we kind of have a lot to talk about today. Lot to talk about, but this is a great starting point because we're talking about support and accountability. Ooh. And whether it's in, your relationship at home with your significant other, whether it's with your business partners, whomever it is that you're spending a good amount of your life with, man, you better choose the right people and they better be people who not only support you, but hold you accountable to the things that you say you're gonna do. And that fits in with today. I chose right, and you are the king of the seamless segue. High five. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, um, George, our producer, did a live stream debate a couple weeks ago, and it was awesome. But he had a guest on there, and I didn't necessarily agree with everything he was saying, but I loved this phrase that he used. He kept saying something along the lines, I'm paraphrasing, but hear my heart, not necessarily each word. Don't hear my heart, hear, hear my thoughts behind this versus just becoming defensive towards my words. And it was amazing because I was able to take steps back and honestly hear what he's saying. I'm like, okay, he's got a point. I don't agree with what he's saying, but he's got a point. So let's start there because I've delved into this topic a couple times on YouTube in the past and I lost a lot of followers and they got very defensive immediately. So here are, here are our hearts on this one. Well put. So, you know, our goal, the goal of this segment today is to talk about encouraging individuals to seek optimal health, mental health, physical health, emotional health and well-being. And as I've said previously, I believe those three things are so interconnected, but they all begin with our physical health. Mm. First and foremost, right? When you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you tend to do good, right? And that's generally the chain. So getting to feeling good requires you putting a little time and energy into looking good. 
there's a lot of different ways that we can do that, right? But I love, and I'm not sure who said it recently, another one I was listening to, someone on social media who said, you know, you should be able to stand in front of the mirror naked and be comfortable with yourself. And I thought about that for a minute. And I said, you know, we all have our insecurities, um, but there's a difference between allowing those insecurities to rule us, to, to steal our joy, our emotions, you know, to, to create a negative emotion versus, you know, there's something that I don't necessarily like about myself and I'm going to work on improving it, mm. right? So for, for me, it's about steady improvement and to be able to be comfortable even confident in my body is very important to me because it's one of those things that I know that I have complete control over now there's different factors there's things that come into play you know when people have illnesses physical limitations taking all those into account but no matter what has happened to me and I've gone through some serious injuries, had some debilitating back issues. I have not allowed that to derail my physical health as being a priority. And in doing so, staying in a peak physical state where I feel strong, I feel confident, I feel capable. That is the foundation for everything else that I have been able to accomplish in my life. And I can point directly to that. My successes are the result of my physical health, well-being, and ultimately confidence. So I, I feel like that's a very, it's, it's a foundational component. Anyone who wants to develop grit ability as a skill, doing difficult things on a consistent basis to achieve the life of your dreams, you got to be willing to do the physical work. And for me, that means self-discipline. Self-discipline is consistency, right? For, for me, that discipline is getting up every morning. Sure. Very early. Going out there, even on mornings like this morning when it's cold and it's not necessarily comfortable, but to go out there and to run. And I've said this before. I run not because I enjoy running. I appreciate the results. And I know that when I look in the mirror, when I'm standing there, I can appreciate the work that I've put in. I see the results and I go, man, that's what that discipline is about. It's not denying myself something. It's being willing to do those, to make the difficult decisions, to do the difficult things on a daily basis. And sometimes that means choosing not to do other things where even when there is... <laughs> You know, there's, there's a strong social component of people. If everyone around us is, is drinking, is indulging in certain, you know, foods, other behaviors that I know aren't healthy. It's me. It's about me having the courage to choose not to do that just because that's what's socially acceptable. I, I have to realize like my priority is my physical health and that physical health is what allowed me not only to have personal success, but it's what has allowed me to contribute to our relationship, to having the life that we now enjoy. And I feel like when my physical health is suffering, I don't have the same, I can't bring the same value. I don't have the, the personal confidence and I don't have the same vitality the same energy to give to our relationship sure and you know you said something about looking in the mirror and you should look in the mirror and love yourself and I'm gonna go completely vulnerable here but I think most women can relate is that there are these ideals right I will never look in the mirror and love my cellulite 80 or 90 percent of women have cellulite but what I can do and what gritability teaches you to do is you get to decide how you're going to look at that. I can look at it as, oh my God, my leg looks like I rolled down a gravel driveway and I hate it. Or you can look at it and say, these legs have carried me on so many miles. They've been able to get me from point A to point B 
They've been able to get me through tons of workouts to win Miss Fitness New Jersey. It's just a matter of how you look at it. And really, nobody else is looking at your body and picking apart those things like you're doing. You're your own worst critic. We are our own worst critics, right? Yes, we have to learn to love ourselves. And the reason this episode came about, and I'm going to go a little controversial now because we got a message on Instagram and somebody was asking us to talk about the love yourself at any size, social media craze that's going on right now. And we actually found this hashtag and let me see if I can get it right. It is H-E-A-S, health at every size. H- and H A E S. This is why I keep you around. There you go. <laughs> and it's it's gotten to the point where it's extremely extremely unhealthy. And when I clicked and I started researching on that, it was all of these extremely mm. overweight, obese, majority young women, very young, like early twenties, late teens, talking about love me at any size. I'm healthy. It doesn't matter that I'm three or four hundred pounds. I'm healthy. And I think that's where you were trying to go in a very PC way is that, no, you're not. You're not healthy when you're three or 400 pounds. You absolutely love yourself. Love yourself in the moment. If I had a sister who was 20 years old and 300 pounds and addicted to food and a sister who was 20 years old and 90 pounds and addicted to any kind of a drug, I would still love the hell out of them, but I would want to get them help for their addictions. And it's very, very similar because you can't tell me that both of those women are healthy. Neither of them are. I'm with you hundred percent and not to veer away from this. I was just trying to ease into it because I know it is very controversial and like anything else, you know, when it hits close to home, something that's very personal in insecurity, people respond and they respond strongly. So that's not coming from a place of confidence when people fire back. Well, it's defensiveness. It is. And it's, and it's defensiveness and it's not, here's the thing. I always say this. I say, don't, don't take my word for it. If you hear me say something, fact check me. Like it's never been easier. Well, no, I should refrain from that. It's much easier to do your homework now to fact check people, but you have access to so much information. You have to check your sources. Make sure that you are going to reliable sources because there's just volume. There's so much information. Take the time, understand, you know, what the science is behind it, because the reality is that being, like you said, grossly overweight or underweight, it works both ways. Neither of those are healthy. And I'll speak from my personal experience I shared previously. I got all the way up to 270 pounds. Now I'm between 6'3 and 6'4. So I'm a little bit taller, bigger frame. I could probably carry a little bit more weight, especially than where I am right now. But I can tell you from my experience, my optimal health and well-being, you know, I don't get on the scale, has nothing to do with weight. For me, it's about when I get out there and I'm doing the work. I get up on a pull-up bar, I can pull myself up to the bar. I can sit up there. I can hang up there. I can do all of these functional movements, including carrying our son around, who's getting bigger by the day, squatting down with him, you know, running up the stairs with him. I can do those things and not feel taxed, completely out of breath, like I did when I was 270 just walking up the stairs, I can do that much more effectively, much more efficiently. I feel good. I don't wake up sore. I don't wake up feeling like I'm hungover. Even if I didn't have a drink, I was feeling lethargic. There were other, there were cumulative effects to me carrying that additional weight that I felt. And being honest with myself, I knew that wasn't the optimal you know, um, wait for me. So coming back to staying off the scale, it's not about the number on that scale, but the reality is you are going to know by your body's physical ability to do those functional movements where an optimal weight is for you. So I don't, I don't go by someone else's recommendation. Well, you should, you should be about this weight. I'm not paying that any mind, right? Um, there's certain guidelines, certain ranges, 
maybe that's a good range. But ultimately, when I look in the mirror, I'm looking for certain things. I know that the science is behind a certain body ratio, right? Like shoulder to hip ratio for a man that is ideal proportions. And that's performance based, meaning the ability to function. And I come back to Da Vinci's Vitruvian man, right? For centuries, like there are certain physical dimensions that are just commonly accepted. But when you start getting into weight that throws off those proportions, the body's just not going to function optimally. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Yeah. And I love that you talked about those charts because if you look at the doctor's office, you know, the BMI chart, that's like height, weight, meat in the middle, a male bodybuilder who's 3% body fat is going to measure in as obese just mm -hmm. because of their body mass composition. There you go. Perfect, perfect point. And that's why I don't like to get stuck on those charts. But here, perfect example. When's the last time you saw an obese Navy SEAL? Mm. Or, or even just like way overweight? You, you, you don't, right? Like these are elite performers, like at the top of their game. They train, you know, a lot of physicality to what they do. That's what their work requires. And let me add this, because you're reminding me of last year, we were at a CrossFit competition. The West Coast Classic was here mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. And there were hundreds, maybe thousands of people at this competition, uh, spectators. And then, of course, there were people that co were competing. But I'm not talking about the people that were competing, because we were looking around in the hallways where all the expos were. And I remember taking note, and I looked at Adam, and I was like, look, there are so many different body types here. There are people that naturally hold on to extra weight. There are people that probably eat more than they should. There are people that are very, very, very lean. Every person's body here is fit. So I don't think that there's a definition of fit. You might just naturally hold on to extra body fat. You might naturally have to work really, really, really hard to put on muscle. And no matter how much you eat, you stay skinny. But that's not what we're talking about. So everybody's going to come in a different shape and size. Look at a baby. You know, they have all this extra chub on them. But we're talking about people that use the excuse of health at any size, love me at any weight, as an excuse to be extremely, extremely unhealthy. But you need to love me at any size. Well, and, and this is where it impacts because you know, people, I used to get this in prison all the time. Let me just do me. And you should just do you, but you have to understand that that's not healthy. And that can't be the campaign is that that's healthy. And, but there's, there's another component to it here, right? Like we have a generation now that is aging and is going to be a burden on the healthcare system because of the myriad additional adverse health consequences of living a certain way, of carrying additional weight. That's just a reality. You look at the number of knee and hip replacements over the last couple decades, it's steadily increased. It's increased as the average body weight has gone up. Like that's not a coincidence. That's interesting you say that because one of these women that was part of this movement, I did a whole bunch of research before this episode and she was in her forties, very early forties. And she said, I was one of those girls back in the day and I have been over 300 pounds since my early 20s. And when I was in my 20s, I was able to run with my friends, hike with my friends, play sports, like to an extent, right? She said, once I hit 35, I started getting all kinds of health issues and she named like a laundry list. And I don't remember all of them. But the one that stood out the most to me was she had ovarian cancer mm. and her doctor told her it was directly related to her obesity. And that she was basically saying the kind of a cry for help to all of these young women. This is not cool. It's not fun. You feel good now because you're in your twenties your body can handle it. And a doctor came in and he said, when you start having health issues due to long-term obesity, they're going to come in hard, fast, and severe because your body is already so taxed for all of this time. It's been in a state of hyper, um, what's the word, inflammation 
it's just working so hard. So you're not just going to be able to deal with these issues that come in. It's bad ones, diabetes, and then all of the issues that come along with diabetes, all kinds of cancers. So it, it's not just from us who are in shape, you know, and have been fighting to stay in shape for so many years. It's from people who are part of this community and doctors. Yeah. I, I mean, clearly there's, there's long-term health consequences. And when I say, you know, people like to fall back on that, well, let me just do me and I'm going to do my own thing. When it starts to affect others, when all of a sudden your health fails you and now a family member has to take care of you, someone has to step up, say that's a child. You know, we have individuals who are reaching retirement age and older and these health adverse health consequences are now catching up to where, you know, they're not able to, to handle these ailments themselves. Family members now have to get involved. I mean, you can even take it all the way to um, various um, brain uh, deficits, whether it's Alzheimer's or other, um, the words escape me at the moment, brain deficiencies. Dementia? Dem well, dementia. Um, any of those are linked to inflammation as well. So sure. The, so those are the, also the result of those it's one of those adverse health consequences. Did you know they're calling Alzheimer's diabetes type three nowadays? So it's directly, directly linked to the diet, to the, to the negative health. So all of these things compound over time and we're starting to see the results of this false belief, this narrative that's out there that it's okay that you can be healthy at any size. That's, that's not the truth. And the other side of it, when you come back to the mental component, right? I, I would challenge those people who are promoting, who are saying, no, I feel really confident at this size. I would challenge that because I think intuitively, if we're listening to our bodies, as you and I, I we frequently have these conversations, you know, about checking in with ourselves, like how do you feel and if you're checking in with yourself, you're going to know that you're not genuinely feeling good. And I've said this previously, if you assume the mindset like that you can just fake it and somehow get the positive results, that's not how we work, right? Like we're not going to respond positively to a fake input. Like if we're not genuinely feeling it, our body's not going to positively respond to that. Absolutely. And going back to the just do me, I'm going to do me. And, you know, I, I've seen people that do the I'm going to do me, or I'm, I'm just going to enjoy life while I can live it. And I've seen them be diagnosed with the horrible conditions. And it flips on a dime once they realize, wait, I'm not invincible. Mm, yeah. And it shouldn't take that, right? Exactly. So I, I guess the goal of this episode for us is really to encourage others to seek optimal health, to make a commitment to doing those difficult things on a daily basis that you might not appreciate in the moment, but you know on the other side, like you know what the rewards are. You know that you are actually going to feel more confident, genuine confidence, because you're gonna look in the mirror and you're gonna go, wow. Look at the improvements that I've made. Look at the muscle. Look at my body's ability. Look at what I can do. And that confidence is going to translate to all aspects of your life. Like that physical fitness is the key. That's the foundational component. And even if you have those limitations, don't hide behind the limitations, whether they're physical or otherwise. Don't allow those to keep you from doing something. Oh, I love that because I saw this one woman who was kind of in our position, but she's amazing, right? And she was like, a lot of these people come out and they'll be like, yes, I love myself at any size. And I'm also this, this, and this, and this diagnosis, totally unrelated. And she says they use it just like you were saying, to hide behind that diagnosis, to not have to better themselves. 
to stay kind of status quo, to not be gritty. But who's that guy? I can't even remember his name, but you met him or he was a speaker somewhere and he was born with no arms and no legs and he's killing life, right? Mm, I wish I could pronounce Nick's last name. It's it's a long Italian name like Santamaro, Santa Marasso. Yes, definitely. Man, Nick, this guy is amazing. He had some help. They put him up on the table. He spoke from a tabletop. No arms, no legs. I mean, I love his Instagram. It shows him, you know, he's he's got specially made um like assistance to help him work out this this guy i mean to watch this guy in the gym working out you know when he entered a, a bodybuilding competition despite all of these quote-unquote physical disabilities i mean this guy is still crushing it that's what inspires me right i mean if you are triggered by this episode and you're still here bless your heart but second of all if you find that guy on instagram and you're one of those people that hides behind your excuses. What's your excuse now? Exactly. And yeah, I just want to say, um, man, like gritability is really, when we talk about gritability being a skill, something that can be developed over time, it's about taking that first step, having the courage to say, you know what? I've lived a certain way for this amount of time, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone. I'm committed to getting better every single day. And what does that mean to get better? To, to seek continual improvement despite the people around me not wanting to, to follow the way that I eat, giving me a hard time for getting up really, really early in the morning, going out in the cold, going to the gym every single day. That's right. I said Go to the gym every single day. There are no days off. There are no cheat days. And a lot of people are going to push back. Sure. Because you're going to make them uncomfortable. So to have gridability means at, at its core base, having the courage to do what others are not willing to do. But now here's the question. In the past year, mm -hmm. how many cheat days have you had? Cheat days? I don't think I've had None. any. Right? Okay. <laughs> But I, 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 the reason I hesitated is because I wanted to think about that and make sure I didn't want to just quickly respond because I've said previously, I will have a piece of cake at someone's point. birthday, but that is, believe me, there's not a cheat day. I don't say, oh, well, I had a piece of cake today, right. so now I'm going to go have this and this and I'm just going to go all in. No, no. Like, that was my point. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, I, no. I, I really wanted to to make sure that that wasn't misinterpreted. I do love that about you. Mm. Even if I just anybody asks how are you, you have to genuinely think. I, I, yeah, I don't I don't want an immediate response. Um, I want to make sure that it's thoughtful, and I I think that you and I do an excellent job of being reflective for one another, that we can have those conversations um, that are open, that are honest. And talk these things through, even if it's an idea that we're not entirely sure. It's like, hey, did you see this? And I'm like, yeah, how do you feel about it? I'm like, I don't know. Let's talk this through. Let me, let me see, you know, how this sits. And when you do that, when you take the time to more closely assess how you're feeling, how you're thinking, like that's the key. Like once you get in tune with that and you start living more intuitively in alignment with you know who who you are at your core man everything in your life just improves well that and i don't know if we're going to get there in this episode but we're living in this society in this day and age of like cancel culture because everybody wants to get instantly offended by words right so if you do that and you check in and you're like oh did you did you hear that did you see what that person did or said, and then you take steps back, you can glean from it the things, I mean, every once in a while there just is a true asshole and you just ignore everything they say. But often it's just maybe the delivery or some words that don't necessarily agree or for some reason in that moment, like this morning with me, it triggers you. But then if you just take steps back and you help coach each other through it, you can glean from that the information that you need. Yeah, I would say, I, I think people generally have gotten soft. 
Snowflakes. Snowflakes. A friend of ours made, made that comment about, I'm raising snowflakes. I'm like, what the hell is a snowflake? He said, you know, my kids, they're, they're white, they're soft, they're fluffy. They melt. They're privileged. They melt under pressure. I said, hmm, that's definitely, that's a snowflake. I get it. And we are definitely not raising a snowflake. No. Not by any means. But that stuck with me. And I realized that there is a good percentage of the population at, at this stage you know, we've raised an entire generation that maybe hasn't had to face the same adversities, mm -hmm. like where they grew up being fully supportive of the culture of, yeah, just whatever you want to do or think, and that's good. And now, because I'm seeing this all the time and what we're doing with staffing, helping people, you know, second chance, get into the workforce, uh, coming out of the justice system. I believe all of the people that I represent coming out of the system who've obviously they've been through adversity. Like these people have been challenged. They've had a taste of life at this point. And as a result, they are so much more grateful when given the opportunity to do something. So they come into the workplace and they're like, let's oh, challenge, bring it on. Yeah. I got this. Like I'm ready to work. I'm here. I'm committed as opposed to individuals who might just now be entering the workforce who really haven't been tested, they haven't been challenged. First sign, first sign of adversity, they're like, oh, this job is too tough. I'm out of here. And that's not just with their job. That's with everything in their life. Like if as soon as someone says something that you don't agree with or you know, you are asked to do something that is deemed too difficult and you tap out, you're like, no, this isn't for me. I don't want to have this conversation. I don't want to be in this place. I'm going to go someplace else. This offends me or this is not for me. Man, like what has happened? Because it's the process of enduring, overcoming those challenges that, I mean, that's what makes us who we are, right? Absolutely. I mean, we were raised by the generation of depression babies, right? Like my, well, the way the story goes is my mother is a twin. My grandmother had my mother and her brother in a field and went back to work. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But the point is like it was walking to school uphill in both ways, no shoes in the snow generation, right? Yep. Well, now the generation that we live in, and I'm totally guilty of this, is we get to hide behind screens and we get to shoot off at the mouth anytime we just feel like somebody said the wrong word. Do you think the people that were walking uphill in no shoes, in the ice and snow, both ways, or the people that had babies and went back to work in the field cared what word somebody used? No, they didn't have that option to be soft like that or to shoot from the hip behind a screen because you could hide and be a keyword key warrior, you know? And I think that's just the thing. Believe me, I do it all the time. And then I have to take steps back and I'm like, delete. That was idiotic. I'm not going to fight with some stranger on the internet. But I think we have a whole generation of people, our generation included, that we've become soft because that's where we go. That's our default. That's what we do. It's what we've done for years and years and years versus put the keyboard away and go lift some weights, go do something that's going to make you stronger. Mm. Go have that confrontation. You are so good at this. I'm not. Doesn't have to be a defensive confrontation, but go have that difficult conversation face to face because you're going to say things very differently than you do if you're tapping keys. So true. Big believer. Face those things head on, whether that's your personal challenge of getting into better physical health whether it's you, you know, taking on something that's just completely outside of your comfort zone, face your challenges head on. That's what gritability is all about. Our message is really to encourage you to seek optimal health and well-being by exercising gritability. Do it every single day. Do those difficult things. And I promise you, you will attain the life of your dreams. You got to just put the work in. Yeah. So we thank you all for joining it. 
joining in again another great episode of gridability i'm your host adam clausen and i'm ro clausen and we'll see you back here the next time